This is KGW News at Sunrise. Coming up this morning on Sunrise, we're learning more about the elementary school shooting in Texas this week. We have firsthand accounts of what happened after police arrived at the school. Also, take a look at this. Does that white Cadillac look familiar? Beaverton police need help identifying the driver after the guy ran over a gas station attendant. I mean, amazingly, the worker's okay. We're going to talk to him coming up. And it is fair season, my friends. It uh, is. Yes. Yay. As of this weekend, first county fair in the area <laughs> kicks off on Saturday, but we're going to bring you a live preview this morning. Uh, all lit up and ready to go, you might say. We're talking about the Multnomah County Fair. It happens every year out at Oaks Amusement Park in Devin Haskins. That is not Devin, by the way. <laughs> but Devin Haskins is going to be joining us live here in just a few minutes for a preview of the fair. Okay, who loves to hula hoop? I haven't I tried it in a while. Hoop. Come on, that was so much fun as a kid. I appreciate a good hula hooper. Yeah, yeah. But I can't say I love to do something that I cannot do. <laughs> you never were able to? Never well. All right. Well, you know, you got to get it. I tried it. But part. Go I on. I tried. Shoot, shoot down. <laughs> shoot, shoot down. All right. We're, we, we digress. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday, Eve. We are so close to the weekend. Yeah. yeah and uh, we, well, the forecast still isn't so great, but I love oh, that well. smile on your face. <laughs> Here's a look at the radar this morning. <laughs> oh, Brenda looked at me like the weekend. I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be, you know, okay. We still have the steady rain Saturday in the forecast. More on that coming up. And already we're seeing uh, uh, cloudiness producing some light moisture and it's tough to tell how much of this is more than a sprinkle but you can see radar is showing some rain outside of Hillsboro a little dab up in Longview so here's a look from the Wells Fargo building some brightness off to the eastern sky sun comes up shortly before 5 30 this morning really comfortable out temperature wise we're at 57 degrees so to the bus stop we go there is that light rain chance out the door so have your rain jacket with you generally speaking in terms of measurable rainfall today we don't Expect much of that until we get into the afternoon hours. So the best chance of rain during the school day starts to pick up when the kids get out of school. It'll still be warm about 72 at 3 o'clock. Rob, thank you. We are learning some more about what happened in Uvalde, Texas, moments after police arrived at Robb Elementary. Reports are saying the gunman was in the school for up to an hour, and people watching urged police to charge inside. Yeah, it all ended after the suspect was shot and killed by a Border Patrol team, but by then, he had already killed 19 children and two teachers. For more, we bring you this NBC report from Texas. Grief and anger slowly replaced the shock in this small South Texas town. After a gunman stole the lives of 19 students and two teachers inside Robb Elementary School. Residents gather to grieve and remember. I cry a lot. And I cried a lot today and yesterday. Governor Greg Abbott describes the pain felt across the state. To say the least, Uvalde has been shaken to its core. All Texans are grieving with the people of Uvalde. And people are rightfully angry. During the governor's press conference, his Democratic opponent, Beto O'Rourke, spoke up. This is totally predictable when you... Sir, you're out of line. Growing frustration after this latest mass shooting. And in this space, I just feel so powerless because after we try and we try and we can't get a modicum, a modicum of gun sense. But for this small Texas community, life forever changed. We need to have a voice. We need to speak. There's something has to be done. This cannot happen again. And the people want to be heard. Wendy Wolfolk, NBC News, Uvalde, Texas. Students here in the metro area turned this tragedy into a call for change. This is in Lake Oswego. Dozens of kids at Lake Ridge High School walked out of class yesterday to rally for stricter gun laws. Older kids understand what happened, but experts say younger kids need parents to help them process the bits and pieces they may be hearing about this shooting. I would be prepared to open up the conversation and then just sit back and listen and maybe not yeah, not just be not wait to talk, but really sit back and listen so that you can understand their perspectives, their questions, their concerns, their fears. 
Dr. Hoffman says if you're struggling to figure out where to start, reach out to your pediatrician, doctor or therapist for advice. Well, the father of one of the victims in this week's shooting in Texas says the support of the Uvalde community is really the only thing keeping his family together right now. He says his daughter was just days away from celebrating her 11th birthday. From my understanding, she had a dress picked out and everything. <laughs> so I'm going to have to buy that dress, the one that she wanted, and we're going we're gonna to hang it up in her quinceanera whenever the time comes. I hang it both up there. So she's never going to be forgotten. She's a big part of our family. The young girl's grandfather, her father and her mother are all sitting down with the Today Show this morning to remember and honor her. That's coming up this morning right after sunrise. Locally, Beaverton police need your help identifying the driver who ran down an attendant at a gas station. The employee is OK, but just a heads up, the surveillance video is hard to watch. Here it is, that white car just speeds up and then hits the employee in the red shirt, tossing him into the air. Oh my goodness. So this happened Sunday night. It was at the Shell station on Southwest Olson Road. Right before this, the victim, Ryan Darby, says he had to ask that man to leave because he appeared to be on drugs and was bothering customers. And it's not as bad as it could have been because if I wouldn't jump, it would have been way worse. Like, I, don't, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. Unreal. So there's a screen cap of that surveillance video. Take a look at that picture of the driver. Police say he was in a white early 90s four door Cadillac. Anyone with information is asked to contact Beaverton police. All right, time to get to some time to get to that is more of this morning's headlines and we start with a story out of Gresham. Police say a pedestrian was killed in a crash on Southeast Orient Drive. This happened just before one o'clock in the morning. They say the driver is cooperating and no charges are being filed at this time. Southeast Orient, by the way, is closed right now from Southeast Barnes to Southeast Chase while police continue to investigate. This next headline also out of Gresham. A person was found dead in the parking lot of an apartment complex there. Police say shots were fired just before 530 yesterday at Southeast Jam Hill near 190th Avenue. So far, though, uh, so far there is no word on a suspect. And this last headline comes to us from Douglas County. A man is dead there following a police shooting. So this shooting happened yesterday morning in Myrtle Creek. Investigators say Douglas County Sheriff's deputies and Myrtle Creek officers responded to a domestic violence complaint. By the time they got there, the suspect was also gone. He was fled the scene. So two hours later, they located him. They rammed his sheriff's vehicle into his car, crashing him into a ditch. They say he got out of the car and engaged a deputy who then fired his weapon, hitting the man one time. He died at the scene. The Douglas County Major Crimes Team is investigating, and those are some of your morning headlines. Well, heading into Memorial Day weekend, if you're looking for something to do, lifeguards will be back on duty at Glen Auto Park. Starting Saturday, they'll be out from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. now through Labor Day. Glen Auto Park is a really popular summer destination, but the river can be dangerous for swimmers. Even on 90 degree days, the water is cold and those currents are swift and unpredictable. Rescue teams say avoid swimming alone and they recommend always wearing a life jacket. All right, Rod Hill back in the picture here this morning, Rod. Uh, yes, oh, I was just going to say, I mean, just I haven't looked at the levels, but I would tell you the eyeball test for the rivers I often see up in Clark County. Uh, I mean, they're running high, yeah. obviously, but still because of all the spring rain. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I know you have a well, you can jump right into your forecast from there, my friend. <laughs> yes, let's what, go. What else is there to say? All right, Ryan? so we have stuff on the radar. I wasn't really expecting stuff on the radar at this <laughs> hour of the morning, but we have stuff on the radar. Here's a look at our weather system tell coming us. in. Now, the front itself still comes in later this afternoon afternoon and forecast models still show most of today's major rainfall being anywhere between about four and eight. So that window of late afternoon, early to mid evening. Um, we are picking up and it's being reported as very light rain along the Oregon coast right now. And I had some sprinkles driving into town this morning and radar is showing there's some light precip up around Longview and some out between McMinnville and Hillsboro. So 
there is the chance that you'll feel a little bit of moisture in the air this morning. Futurecast doesn't really show that, but we know it's out there. Here we are at 430. Now we are expecting scattered showers to be picking up. There's the main shot of rain coming in early evening at 7 o'clock, and then this kicks off the ongoing chance of some rain into the weekend. I don't think we have a lot of total rain tomorrow either. This shows there's not much around in the morning. A few more scattered showers in the afternoon, but wait for it. Here it comes. This is Saturday morning, 5 a.m. This is that big surge of what will be for the most part a steady rain Saturday. Uh, one of the models um, that a lot of forecasters, including myself, look at uh, the most shows like an inch and a quarter of rain Saturday through Saturday night. So that's a big widespread soak still showing up for us. Numbers are warm this morning. Our story is 48, but look at Portland 57, Salem 57 degrees. The Dow's at 57 and everybody's at least in the 40s right now out across eastern Oregon. So the coast, we're getting light reports, or getting reports of light rain rather at this hour and then afternoon showers picking up here as well. Upper 50s to low 60s expected. Willamette Valley numbers today probably still reach 70 uh, PDX at 73 yesterday afternoon. The increasing uh, afternoon showers, west winds 5 to 15, similar numbers up through southwest Washington. Here's the cool down tomorrow, 66, a few showers, a steady rain Saturday, 60. Snow levels could still be 4,000 feet over Cascade Passes early Sunday morning. Monday still looks dry, 66 for Memorial Day, and then we start to warm up Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. That is your forecast. And we'll have more from Rodney coming up in 10 <laughs> minutes. Right now, though, another local story we want to bring you this morning. Well, after a year, a uh, year that is, after opening its doors, the Nick Fish Affordable Housing Community finally had its official grand opening. That grand opening was delayed because of COVID. So here it is, the community located near the Gateway Discovery Park at Northeast Halsey Street and 106th Avenue. It was named in honor of former Portland Housing and Park Commissioner Nick Fish, who died from cancer back in 2020. This project really brings together his passions for affordable housing, for Portland's parks, and for community-produced uh, community art, all of which really come together beautifully on this site. The community includes 75 units. 52 of them are designated as affordable housing. All of the apartments are full now, but people can apply to get on a wait list at the City of Portland website. We also want to take you out live to Oaks Park this morning. We're previewing the Multnomah County Fair. It starts on Saturday and it runs through the holiday weekend. Look who's out there hula hooping, Mr. Carney. Yes, Devin Haskins this yes, morning. Yes, look at him go. See, I want to see it around his waist. I feel like he's cheating a little bit doing it on his arm. But you know what? Oh. Oh, look at him. He's taking the challenge. <laughs> and that's why he wasn't taking the challenge. <laughs> you can practice during the commercial break, but tons of things to do for family fun. We'll check back with Devin after the break.